balance. Your tool should help you to keep balance in your life, to identify your various rules and keep them right in front of you, so that you don't neglect important areas such as your health, your family, professional preparation, or personal development. Many people seem to think that success in one area can compensate for failure in other areas of life, but can it really? Perhaps it can for a limited time in some areas. But can success in your profession compensate for a broken marriage, ruined health, or a weakness in personal character? True effectiveness requires balance, and your tool needs to help you create and maintain it. Quadrant to focus, you need a tool that encourages you, motivates you, actually helps you spend the time you need in Quadrant 2, so that you are dealing with prevention rather than prioritizing crisis. In my opinion, the best way to do this is to organize your life on a weekly basis. You can still adapt and prioritize on a daily basis, but the fundamental thrust is organizing the week. Organize on a weekly basis provides much greater balance and context than daily planning. There seems to be implicit cultural recognition of the week as a single complete unit of time, business, education, and many other facets of society operate within the framework of the week, designating certain days for a focused investment and others for relaxation and inspiration. The basic Judeo-Christian ethic honors the Sabbath, the one day out of every seven set aside for uplifting purposes. Most people think in terms of weeks, but most third generation planning tools focus on daily planning. Why? They may help you prioritize your activities. They basically only help you organize crisis and busy work. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule but to schedule your priority. And this can best be done in the context of the week. A people dimension. You also need a tool that deals with people, not just schedules. Why you can think in terms of efficiency in dealing with time, a principle-centered person thinks in terms of effectiveness in dealing the people, there are times when principle-centered quadrant to living requires the subordination of schedule to people, your tool needs to reflect that value to facilitate implementation rather than create guilt when a schedule is not followed. Flexibility. Your planning tool should be your servant, never your master. Since it has to work for you, you should be tailored to your style, your needs, and your particular ways. Portability. Your tool should also be portable so that you can carry it with you most of the time 
you may want to review your personal mission statement while riding the bus. You may want to measure the value of a, a new opportunity against something you already had planned. If your organize is portable, you will keep it with you so that important data is always within reach. Since Quadrant 2 is the heart of effective self-management, you need a tool that moves you into Quadrant 2. My work with the fourth generation concept had led to the creation of a tool specifically designed according to the criteria listed above. But many good third generation tools can easily be adapted because the principles are sound, the practices or specific application can vary from one individual to the next. Becoming a quadrant two self manager. Although my effort here is to teach principle, not practices of effectiveness. I believe you can better understand the principles and the empowering nature of the fourth generation. If you actually experience organizing a week from a principle-centered quadrant two base, quadrant two organizing involves four key activities. Identifying goals. The first task is to write down, write down your key roles. If you haven't really given serious thought to the roles in your life, you can write down what immediately comes to mind. You have a role as an individual. You may want to list one or more roles as a family member, a husband or wife mother or father, son or daughter, a member of the extended family of grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins. You may want to list a few rules in your work indicating different areas in which you wish to invest time and energy on a regular basis. You may have rules in church or community affairs. You don't need to worry about defining the roles in a way that you will live with for the rest of your life. Just consider the week and write down the areas you see yourself spending time in during the next seven days. Here are two examples of the way people might see their various roles. Individual, husband or father, manager, new product, manager, research, manager step, Manager Administration, Chairman United Way, Personal Development, Wife, Mother, Real Estate Salesperson, Sunday School Teacher, Symphony Board Member. Selecting words. The next step is to think of two over very important result you feel you should accomplish in each role during the next seven days. These would be recorded as goals. At least some of these goals should reflect according to two activities. Ideally, these short-term goals would be tied to the long-term goals you have identified in conjunction with your personal mission statement. But even if you have written your mission statement, you can get a feeling, a sense of what is important as you consider each of your roles and two or three goals for each role. Schedule. Now you look at the week ahead with your goals in mind and schedule time to achieve them. For example, if your goal is to produce the first draft of your personal mission statement 
you may want to set aside a two-hour block of time on Sunday to work on it. Sunday or some other day of the week that is special to you, your fate, or your circumstances. It's often the ideal time to plan your more personally uplifting activities, including weekly organizing. It's a good time to draw back, to see inspiration, to look at your life in the context of principles and values. If you set a goal to become physically fit through exercise, you may want to set aside an hour, three or four days during the week, or possibly every day during the week to accomplish that goal. There are some goals that you may only be able to accomplish during business hours or some that you can only do on Saturday when your children are home. Can you begin to see some of the advantages of organizing the week instead of the day? Having identified rules and set goals, you can translate each goal to a specific day of the week either as a priority item or even better as a specific appointment. You can also check your annual or monthly calendar for any appointments you may have previously made and evaluate their importance in the context of your goals, transferring those you decide to keep your schedule and making plans to reschedule or cancel others. As you study the following weekly work seat, observe how each of the 19 most important of quadrant two goals has been scheduled or translated into a specific action plan. In addition, notice the box labeled sharpen the soul that provides a place to plan vital renewing quadrant two activities in each of the four human dimensions that will be explained in habit seven. Even with the time set aside to accomplish 19 important goals during the week, look at the amount of remain on scheduled space on the work seat. As well as empowering you to put first things first, Quadrant 2 weekly organizing gives you the freedom and the flexibility to handle unanticipated events to shift appointment if you need to, to save relationships and interaction with others, to deeply enjoy spontaneous experience, knowing that you have proactively organized your week to accomplish key goals in every area of your life. Daily adapting with the quadrant to weekly organizing daily planning becomes more a function of daily adapting or prioritizing activities and responding to on anticipated events, relationships, and experiences in a meaningful way. Taking a few minutes each morning to review your schedule can put you in touch with the value-based decisions you made as you organized the week as well as on anticipated factors that may have come up. As you overview the day, you can see that your rules and goals provide a natural prioritization that grows out of your innate sense of balance. It is a softer, more right brain prioritization that ultimately comes out of your sense of personal mission. 
we may still find that the third generation A, B, C, or one, two, three prioritization gives needed order to daily activities. It would be a first dichotomy to say that activities are either important or they aren't. They are obviously on a continuum and some important activities are more important than others. In the context of weekly organizing, third generation prioritization gives order to daily focus. But trying to prioritize activities before you even know how they related to your sense of personal mission and how they fit into the balance of your life is not effective. They may be prioritizing and accomplishing things you don't want or need to be doing at all. Can you begin to see the difference between organizing your week as a principle-centered quadrant to manager and planning your days as an individual centered on something else? Can you begin to sense the tremendous difference the quadrant to focus would make in your current level of effectiveness? Having experienced the power of principle-centered quadrant to organizing in my own life, and having seen, seen it transform the lives of hundreds of other people, I am persuaded it makes a difference, a quantum positive difference, and the more completely weekly goals are tied into a wider framework of correct principles and into a personal mission statement, the greater the increase in effectiveness will be. Leaving it. Returning once more to the computer metaphor, if habit one says you are the programmer and habit two says write the program, then habit three says run the program. Leave the program, and leaving it is primarily a function of our independent will. Our discipline, our integrity and commitment not to short-term goals and schedule or to the impulse of the moment, but to the correct principles and our own deepest value, which give meaning and context to our goals, our schedules, and our lives. As you go through your week, there will be there there will undoubtedly be time when your integrity will be placed on the line. The popularity of reacting to urgent but on important priorities of other people in quadrant 3 or the pleasure of escaping to quadrant 4 will threaten to overpower the important quadrant 2 activities you have planned. Your principle center, your self-awareness, and your conscience can provide a high degree of intrinsic security guidance and wisdom to empower you to use your independent will and maintain integrity to the truly important. But because you aren't omniscient, you can always know in advance what is truly important. As carefully as you organize the week, these will be times when, as a principle centered person, you will need to subordinate your schedule to a higher value. 
because you are principle centered. You can't do that with an inner sense of peace. At one point, one of my sons was deeply into scheduling and efficiency. One day, he had a very tight schedule, which included down to the minute time allocation for every activity, including picking up some books, washing his car, and drag, uh, dropping carrots, his girlfriend, among other things. Everything went according to schedule until it came to care. They had been dating for a long period of time, and he had finally come to the conclusion that a continued relationship would not work out. So, congruent with his efficiency mode, he had scheduled a 10 to 15 minutes telephone call to tap. But as but the news was very traumatic to her, one and a half hours later, he was still deeply involved in a very intense conversation with her. Even then, the one visit was not enough. The situation was a very frustrating experience for them both. Okay, you simply can't think efficiency with people. You think effectiveness with people and efficiency with things. I've tried to be efficient with their disagreeing or disagreeable person, and it simply doesn't work. I've tried to give 10 minutes of call your know, time to a child or an employee to solve a problem only to discover such efficiency creates new problems and seldom resolve the deepest concern. I see many parents, particularly mothers with small children, often frustrated in their desire to accomplish a lot because all they seem to do is meet the needs of little children all day. Remember, frustration is a function of our expectation, and our expectations are often a reflection of the social mirror rather than our own values and priority. But if you have, have it too deep inside your heart and mind, you have those higher values driving you. You can subordinate your schedule to those values with integrity. You can adapt. You can be flexible. You don't feel guilty when you don't meet your schedule or when you have to change it. Advances of the fourth generation. One of the reasons why people resist using third generation time management tools is because they lose spontaneity. They become rigid and flexible. The, they subordinate people to schedules because the efficiency paradigm of the third generation management is out of harmony with the principles that people are more important than things. The fourth generation to recognize that principle, it also recognizes that the first person you need to consider in terms of effectiveness rather than efficiency is yourself. It encourages you to spend time in quadrant two to, to understand and center your life on principle to give clear expression to the purposes and values you want to direct your daily decisions. It helps you create balance in your life. It helps you rise above the limitation of daily planning and organize and schedule in the context of the week. 
and then a higher level of conflict with what you have planned, it empowers you to use your self-awareness and your conscience to maintain integrity to the principles and purposes you have determined are most important. Instead of using a roadmap, you are using a compass.